You may have noticed in past videos showing the backyard that brush is invading the yard. Something had to be done and so we got a DR Power Field and Brush Mower Pro XL 44T 22 horsepower with the electric start to take care of the brush creep. I will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly of this brush mower. I'm Scott Bain. They call me the old farmer. I have a Baldwin PTO-driven brush mower. It's just too big for my farm all A. In episode 9, The Old Farmer, What Happened to the Tractor, I talked about how I hit a buried log. The clutch in the brush mower did not slip as it should have, and a piece of the transmission of the farm all broke. The brush mower is just too doggone big for this tractor, except for maybe mowing pasture grass. I finally broke down and bought a DR Power Field and Brush Mower Pro XL 44T 22 horsepower with electric start. I've only recently been able to test out this DR Power Mower since purchasing it on June 18th, 2021, half a summer ago. This is a 44 inch cut with a 22 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine with electric start. The mower arrived damaged beyond belief. It should not have been shipped when visible damage to the mower was apparent, or if it was damaged in transit, returned to DR Power as damaged in shipping before I received it. There are two Acme threads used for raising and lower the deck, one on each side that are independently cranked to a specific height. The port or left side Acme thread with assorted hardware was snapped off below the frame of the mower. To move it around the garage, I had to strap a web clamp onto it to lift the deck from dragging around. Acme screws or Acme threads have a much better wear property, load capabilities, and tolerances than standard threaded rod. Since the threads are thicker and wider, they operate better in environments with dirt and debris. I didn't know there was a local DR Power dealer in the area. The closest one I knew about was an hour away. After realizing that it was a threaded rod that had snapped off, I refused to work on it for free. Tech support found a dealer close by, and I called and let them know the problem. I had to jump on DR Power to send an authorization to the dealer. They kept saying, set up an appointment and have it taken to the shop. The dealer would not do so unless I paid for it without an authorization form from DR Power or get DR Power to send an authorization for repair, pickup, and delivery. I finally had to set strong priorities with the person that handled this at the manufacturer. This motivated her to finally do her job. This was the only difficult person I found at DR Power. The dealer came and picked up the mower, and it sat for three weeks, for a total of five weeks since it was first delivered. If I was the dealer, I would have tied such a customer, in this case me, to them by jumping out ahead of the issue, by looking over the damage immediately, ordering the parts needed, and when the parts came in, instantly fix the mower and get it delivered. Instead, they stuck the repair in a queue. When it was time to work on the machine, only then did they order the parts, and then put the mower back into the queue until the parts came in. At that time, I was given a queue position and had to wait until it was my time for the repairs to be made. The dealer did good work, but by their queuing me to death, did not create a loyal customer. They could have tied me to them with nothing more than loyalty to my problem. Indifference is the best way for me not to look at them again. If that's the way business is done these days, the one place that will do business the old-fashioned way will blow the socks off of everyone else. The pickup and delivery man took ownership and made sure that it was in running order when it was returned. I had ordered heavy-duty plates and the delivery man made sure they were installed. He made sure it was filled with oil and was in running order before he delivered it. The dealer did try to get me to pay for pickup and delivery. 
even though DR Power considered it part of the warranty package for receiving a damaged mower. Could this be an attempt of double billing? The mower was returned to me the very same day that we had thunderstorms that lasted a couple of days, and two weeks later there still are areas of standing water, and the lawn is still soggy. It's much too wet to mow the lawn. Since I was mowing brush, I hooked the brush mower to the farm all A and started to knock back the brush on the parameter of the lawn. With most products, there are the good, the bad, and the ugly. I usually find most companies will be cheap with the small stuff that is important in making the product dependable and easy to use, but make things difficult over the short or long term if out of order. It makes for a cheap repair for them and they can charge through the nose to the customer. A prime example, Pyrex storage bowls. The replacement lids cost about the same as buying a new set. I did have a tractor problem where I went through and replaced again the ballast resistor and soldered new connectors with heat shrink on the wire which fed the ignition system of the tractor. It ran smoothly once repaired. In 137, Farmall A won't start. I noticed I was having trouble mowing the brush. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. I found out with everything exposed on the mowing deck that the remote control of the solenoid that engaged the start and stop of the blades had an exposed connector on the deck that could be pulled apart by brush. I mowed for about half a day and this plug came apart four times and the battery leads were pulled off twice. Every nook and cranny of this mower seems to grab at the brush. To see if the mower would actually keep the blades engaged, I mowed a strip of the neighbor's lot and found out that I could not tell if the blades were engaged or not. Between the noise of the tractor and the motor on the mower, I could not even hear if they were running. Also, it's impossible to look back while driving and see if wires have become disconnected because of the motor housing being in the way. I finally stopped the tractor and turned on the blades while standing next to the mower. I then tried mowing a strip of the neighbor's high grass. I had adjusted the deck from the highest setting to about two and a half inches, and after two passes, all I did was knock off the top one third of the grass. When I tried mowing the grass along the road that was mowed several times a year, it did a much better job. Most pros will not sharpen the blades, only replace them if they get out of balance but the Baldwin PTO-driven brush mower does a better job on tall grass. This is what I think. The machine itself is constructed solid. There's no debate in my mind about that. There should be a shroud or hood over at least the electrical components and the rubber gas line. I will have to fashion something or have a shop make one for me. It will not be a problem if all you mow is pasture land, but if there are branches, a shroud is a must. This is a bad design flaw with no solution offered by DR Power. The indicator signage that tells how high the deck is and which way to turn the handles are just everyday cheap gum labels and were drifting because of the glue even before I got the mower I could see that the labels had started to drift. These instructions and also how many turns per inch should be etched into the frame, not randomly place gum labels that make it look like it's part of the frame in pictures, but instead is actually a photographic trick making it look like these instructions are part of the frame. I should mention that the number of turns per inch is in the manual, but it should be part of the labeling on the frame too. To me, this is purposefully misleading, therefore it can be considered deceptive advertising. There should be a tally light on the remote that tells whether the blades are engaged or not. You are totally blind to the condition of the blades. This makes me a bit nervous not knowing the status of the machine. At the very least, a tally light on the deck that we could turn around to see if everything is working. I would have the tally lights in series with the clutch of the blade and the engine. Both have to be turned on before it showed green. I don't know how many times I had the blades engaged by the remote switch, but the blades were not engaged because of the connector. Best would be a tally light on the deck and on the remote. So if I don't want the wires ripped out, I will have to build or buy a shroud. This will not be cheap doing a custom job. DR Power does not offer anything.
I will also either have to take the mower in to have these labels etched into the frame or have metal signage made and consider how best to attach them. All out of my pocket and time on a machine that cost almost $4,000. Unbelievable. I picked up the used Baldwin PTO driven brush mower for about $600 or so. Even when you figure in the cost of the tractor repair when I hit that hidden log, it cost me thousands of dollars less than the DR Power package. I understand how machines have to be made. The machine itself is made well. Deception should not be part of the package. I'm talking about the labels for signage that are designed to fall off and then shipping a visibly damaged implement lacking proper shroud and properly designed signage. I must admit one of the biggest mistakes is being corrected. Generac Power Systems Incorporated, the makers of Generac Generator Standby Systems, has bought DR Power. The only way I found out was when the credit charge went through and it had Generac, not DR Power, processing the purchase. They are now showing the Generac name on the website. I had to call back to find out what was going on. I had cleared the purchase beforehand with a credit card company that a large purchase from DR Power would be coming through. When it came from Generac, all the alarms sounded and they almost refused to process the purchase, wasting my time again dealing with this problem. We have a Generac standby generator. This is our second a 23KW. For those not familiar with the terminology, a 23KW generator is a 23,000 watt generator. Mine is running on propane. At our previous house, we had one installed that was 13KW running on natural gas. I will say good generators, but I do not like dealing with Generac as a company to the point that if I ever had to buy another standby generator, it would not be from Generac. In fact, if I had known at the time that Generac had bought DR Power, I would not have purchased a brush mower from them. I feel the company has bad attitude, and I don't have to deal with such companies. To me, they have a holier-than-thou attitude, and by subsequent conversations with DR Power over this mess, by careful omission from those I talk to, they are not happy with Generac either. Now for the positives. I bought a deck with the highest horsepower available. It has the power to cut up to the maximum specifications and a bit more. Those at DR Power, the people, really wanted to make this right. But I still have lost half a summer dealing with crap that I should not have had to deal with. I had to have the farm of mow my field that we had cleared after spending $4,000 for a mower so that this field and brush removal could be safely accomplished. Luckily, we have great neighbors who watch out for us. As an aside, we had an Instapot cooker from Crockpot. There was a lid recall. They shipped out a replacement lid. As a way of apologizing, they sent by separate mail a hard copy library bound edition of their cookbook. That's making good plus. I know these things happen. That's part of life. It's what the company will do to make it right and show that they know it's putting a real burden onto the customer. Crockpot went above and beyond. DR Power did not. I am truly sorry for those good people still working at DR Power. I think there will be a rapid turnover within a few months. Did DR Power know of these problems that I talked about of the shroud and the labels? Of course they did. Just read some of the reviews on their site. For DR Power to address these issues would be very inexpensive because of mass production. For me to correct these delinquencies being custom made, it will either take me a lot of time or a lot of money. These are not inconveniences. I consider them to be safety issues. OSHA, are you listening? These are issues that need a recall to fix these omissions. The shroud should also protect the gas line. Ripping everything out, there could be a fire. Not knowing that the blade is operational could mean serious injury or even death. And in the end, let me say it is a well-built machine, but with serious omissions. If you're going to purchase, do so locally and get as much warranty as you can. 
I don't see any problems with the deck per se. I do so with exposed components and the losing of the labels. As for me, most of the time was waiting for nothing being done. So in the comments, I would like to know what experiences you've had with DR Power. Also with Generac now owning the company, will it make any difference to you? Why is it that the one company you do not want to deal with buys the company you want to deal with? This has happened to me about five times and in some cases has taken years to untangle myself from such a company. Before I go, let me ask you to subscribe, ring the bell, do a comment, and share. At this point, we're trying to get over that 1,000 subscription level so that we can start tying into advertising. Already, we've had great expenses involved with providing this channel. We're not complaining, we just need a little help from you. So if you could do the things that YouTube would want you to do, and don't forget to share, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Well, this is the old farmer, Scott Payne. Be well. Be safe. Don't forget to click like and click subscribe on the old farmer YouTube channel. And thanks again for watching. Bye. The VFW National Home for Children, providing families of veterans and active duty military opportunities for growth and development in a nurturing community. Please consider a donation to help their children and families. Icy Road speaking.